Hey, it's Teresa from Life Beyond Diabetes. And um, yesterday we talked about vision care and the importance of vision care and um, how uncontrolled diabetes can cause issues with long-term vision complications. And today I'm going to talk about peripheral, peripheral neuropathy, which is a similar complication, but it's nerve damage that happens in your hands and feet. And um, it's it usually actually um, is in your feet. And it's caused by ongoing high blood sugars that block the um, circulation of blood in the tiny blood vessels in your um, in your extremities. So it's called it's called a microvascular complication because it's in those small blood vessels. So microvascular. And um, in the early stages of uh, peripheral neuropathy, it's generally experienced as kind of a pins and needles sensation. And, um, and different people experience it different ways. Um, eventually it can become quite painful for some people. Some people just lose all sensation in their feet or in their hands. Um, and if it becomes painful, the, it's treated symptomatically, um, usually with, um, medications that treat nerve pain um, and um, so that and those of course we want to avoid that because there are some issues with with medications that treat nerve pain but um, it is it is treatable it but not completely so it is a complication that we definitely want to do everything we can to avoid and the way we avoid that is by avoiding ongoing high blood sugar um, so that's what it is. Now, the reason, aside from the pain and the inconvenience of the numbness, the reason that it's so important to not have peripheral neuropathy is that peripheral neuropathy can lead to one of the scariest complications of, of diabetes. So yesterday we talked about you know, the, the things that we hear about scary diabetes is like, oh, blindness and amputation. Well, we talked about blindness yesterday. This is the amputation part. So again, I don't want to scare you because this is highly preventable. Take care of your well-managed diabetes does not end in amputation, okay? But this is why, just like we talked about yesterday, routine eye care is important. Routine foot care is important. This is why when you go see your medical provider, they do a sensation test. They um, generally, and I don't have one of the little... Um, a sample of what it looks like, but they take a, um, a microfilament, it's kind of like a, a fishing line, um, a tool that has a little fishing line thing, and they just, um, well, we're gonna pretend that this is a foot, they'll just touch your toes and the balls of your feet, and then your heel, and they'll just check your sensation. So, and it's something that's just a very light touch, and they'll see if you can feel that. And what they're checking for is to make sure that you still have sensation everywhere on your foot. Because if you're starting to get numbness, they want to be watching to make sure that you can feel everything. And the reason for that is that if you're losing sensation in your feet, which is what happens if you are getting the nerve damage, in addition to pain, you might be losing sensation. If you get a wound on your foot, so if you're walking barefoot in your house or outside and you scrape your foot, and you don't feel it because you've got nerve damage in your foot. You don't know it, so you just kind of, you know, we don't look at the bottoms of our feet very often. You don't feel it, it doesn't hurt, so you just keep going on with your life. And you could have, a, you could get a pretty serious wound that could get infected. Now, they get infected and they don't heal as well because you don't have good blood circulation down there. That's why you got the nerve damage in the first place. So this is where the scary complications of diabetes that we talk about come from. Again, well-managed, generally not a problem, but this is why we need to pay attention to it. So if you start getting some nerve damage, your medical provider needs to be aware of that so that you can be paying closer attention to your feet. And it is very important to be paying attention to your feet because if you're having poor circulation in your feet, we don't want you to, to get a wound that you don't know about have it get infected, not be healing because you don't have good circulation because you've got damage to the, to the small blood vessels. So that is where those amputations come from 
is poor wound healing following low sensation. So this is not the story that for most people, this is a scary scenario. This is not going to be your story. Okay. Cause you're here today. You're learning about this cause you want to be healthy. You don't want this to be your story. So we're going to keep, we're going to make sure that that is not your story. So if you do develop neuropathies, again, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean the amputation is your story. What it means is if you develop neuropathies, you need to stay on top of your foot care. And there's ways to do that. One is that if you develop neuropathies and you're losing sensation in your feet is you don't go barefoot outside anymore. And if you do go barefoot in the house, you make sure that you are, that your floors are clean and that you don't have ways to injure your foot. You do your own foot checks every night. Now there are people that um, have mirrors in their bathroom that every night before bed, they just stand in front of the mirror and look in the, just take a quick look on the floor. Um, so they stand not the mirror on the floor. So they stand, lift their foot on and have a look at the bottom of their foot every night before bed. Make sure that there's no wounds on the bottom of your foot. Simple little, th little habits to make sure that your feet are staying healthy. So those are the things about diabetic neuropathy that we need to talk about. Now there is one further thing that is kind of throws just a whole wrench into this whole diabetic neuropathy thing. And that is that there is another thing that can cause neuropathy and that is a B12 deficiency. And complicating that, of course, because nothing is ever easy with diabetes, right? Um, the most commonly prescribed drug for diabetes, aside from insulin, is metformin. And metformin in many people can cause a B12 deficiency. So, and this happened to me personally. When I was taking metformin, I, I got a B12 deficiency and I got neuropathies. And I didn't know that metformin causes B12 deficiency. And so my doctor said that I had diabetic neuropathies. And I was so, again, this is back when things were early on for me with diabetes. And I was so upset about this because my blood sugars, I was doing everything I could. My blood sugars were pretty normal. And here I had this really, what I thought was a really severe complication of diabetes. And it turned out it wasn't. It was that my B12 was low. And as soon as my B12 was corrected, the neuropathies went away. And in the meantime, I was given a diagnosis of diabetic neuropathy that still is in my chart because nobody bothered to check my B12. So, you know, when they finally did check it, it went, oh, hey, that's a B12 deficiency. So if you are taking metformin, first of all, make sure you're also taking a B12 supplement. You, um, you can talk with your medical provider about whether or not you should be taking B12 injections or um, taking a supplement. But um, a lot of medical providers don't either don't know or don't think about the fact that, B, that metformin can cause a B12 deficiency. And so they don't recommend a supplement. They don't think about it. So that's something to ask your provider about and find out what they recommend for that. And, and if they're not aware of it, bring it to their attention so that you can be following up on that because a B12 deficiency can be very serious. And when it's related to metformin, it's something that generally can be corrected pretty quickly and those neuropathies can get taken care of right away. We do not want B12 deficiency neuropathies to become permanent. They do not need to become permanent. They can be corrected as long as we get to them early. So, um, and in my practice, anybody who's taking metformin, I include a B12 check in their routine labs every year. When we're checking their labs, we're making sure and making sure that they do not have a B12 deficiency. So again, that is something you, you can request from your medical provider. In the US, insurance generally covers that if you are taking metformin because that is a known complication of metformin. So um, again, not a big concern with metformin because it is so easily supplemented, but something that you should be aware of because it can be confused for diabetic neuropathy and because diabetic neuropathy is such a serious complication, you should make sure that you have the correct diagnosis. There's a difference between B12 neuropathy and diabetic neuropathy. You wanna make sure you have the correct diagnosis in your chart if you are having neuropathies. So 
Um, if you have any questions about that, do go ahead and leave me a comment. Um, as you know, this one is coming to you recorded because I had a meeting today during the time of today's live. Um, but I will be checking in on comments. So if there's any questions or concerns, definitely let me know. I will get back to you in the comments. I will be back tomorrow on Thursday. Um, at um, 2 30 pacific and i'm going to talk about the other major microvascular complication of diabetes and that is um, kidney disease so um, again i'm talking about the big scary things this week these are avoidable there are there are big complications but they're they're avoidable and they're things that we can take care of so um, i'll see you back here tomorrow at 2 30 pacific and i will be live tomorrow at 2 30. see you then bye